The three new types of Archon Shards added to Warframe are an absolute game changer, in the sense that they don't just increase their damage numbers a little bit, they actively open up countless new build options and playstyles never seen before. So let's take a look at what exactly these new shards can do and how you can obtain them for yourself to get you up to speed on Warframe's new meta. As always, big shout out to all my generous channel members who helped me keep the lights on. And now, let's jump right into it. Now, before we get into all the nitty gritty numbers, I need to make one big disclaimer. The new Archon Shard system is very fresh, and that means at this point in time, there isn't any in-detail information on the wiki yet about all the numbers and the synergies that might or might not be. So in case anything of what I'm about to say turns out to be wrong, I will keep you updated in the pinned comment down below. But now, let's take a look at what these shards can do. All right. With the Whispers in the Wall update, we got three brand new types of Archon Shards, those being the Violet, Topaz, and Emerald Archon Shards, or as I like to call them, uh, purple, orange, and green. Now, while the effects that these Archon Shards can provide are very individual, there is one option that all three have in common, so before we jump into the individual Archon Shards, let's take a look at that first. All three new shards give you one option to increase your Warframe's ability damage. For the purple one, the condition is to all enemies affected by electricity status. For the orange one, it's all enemies affected by radiation. And for the green one, it's all enemies affected by corrosion status effects. The gain in every case is plus 10% ability damage on a normal Archon Shard and plus 15 on a Tau Forge variant. But if you hear ability damage, you might be thinking, why would I want to go for that? I mean, you can use a basic red Archon Shard to give ability strength, and ability strength also always translates into ability damage one to one. So why would you go for ability damage over ability strength? Well, this was also a question bothering me, so I went over to the Warframe Creator Discord and asked the team directly what's up with that. And big shoutouts to GEZEC for quickly answering this one for me, so I can clear that up for you. The big difference here is that ability damage increase with the new Archon Shards is multiplicative to the ability damage increase that comes simultaneously with ability strength from the old shards. Let me give you an example to make that a bit clearer. Let's imagine we have a Warframe ability that deals at base 100 damage. If we then increase our ability strength to 200%, that skill would naturally deal 200 damage. If we now go and add a red Archon Shard for plus 10% ability strength, our ability strength would then sit at 210%, giving us also 210 damage. So far, nothing new. However, if instead of the red Archon Shard for ability strength, we would go for one of the new Archon Shards for ability damage, what the new Shard would do is, it looks at the ability damage that you have at this point in time, aka 200, and then adds its 10% on the base of that. So in this case, we would still stay at 200% ability strength, but the ability damage would not be 200, but 220, aka 10% more from the new shard. Now, all in all, this might not seem too exciting. I mean, 210 versus 220 damage isn't all that impressive of a difference, but if we're getting to the really highly damaging abilities, this little difference can have drastic consequences in damage output. All in all, if you have a damage-dealing Warframe that can either inflict electricity, radiation, or corrosion, then the corresponding Archon Shard effect from the new shards might be a great option if you like min-maxing. And now with that out of the way, let's look at the three new types individually, starting out with the Violet one. Also, it would be super lovely if you could spare a like because it helps the channel out a ton. So cheers for that, mate. So, the first individual thing that the Violet Archon Shard provides is electricity damage to your primary weapon, plus 30% on the normal and plus 45% on the Tau Forge variant. And in addition, for every red, blue or violet Archon Shard that you have equipped in addition, you gain plus 10% on the normal and plus 15% on the Tau Forge variant on top of that. So this one really wants to motivate you to crank up the Archon Shards to 11. All in all, if you want more electricity damage for your primary weapon, you can use this one. Also synergizes well with the ability damage to enemies affected by electricity status, so you can use your primary weapon to inflict the electricity and then use your Warframe to deal a bit more ability damage on those enemies. The next option would be a critical damage buff for melee weapons, coming in at 25% for the normal and 37% for the Tau Forged variant. 
Also, when your maximum energy is over 500, which is quite a lot to be honest, this damage boost is doubled. This one is super interesting because it drastically motivates us to use more blue Archon shards on that specific Warframe. See, even with Prime Flow, not every Warframe can even get to 500 maximum energy at all. So a lot of frames would need those blue Archon shards on top to make it across the 500 threshold. This then again would also synergize nicely with the previous effect that, as we said, gets additional electricity damage for every blue, red or purple Archon shard equipped. And the last option that we get is Equilibrium. No, I mean, like, seriously, this is none other than Equilibrium. What it does is, if you pick up health, 20% of that is converted into energy, and if you pick up energy, 20% of that is converted into health. For the Tau Forge variant, it will be 30%. And when I say converted, what I mean, of course, is you get both. Now, as awesome as this may sound, I don't think it's all that great. Because if you really wanted to replace Equilibrium with its plus 110%, you would have to have three Tau Forged Reds, three Tau Forged Blues, and then one Normal Red and one Normal Blue, turn them all into Violets, and only then would this open up the one Equilibrium mod slot. Now, of course, not every Warframe build needs 110% from Equilibrium, so if you can do away with way less than that, then maybe one or two Violet Archon Shards might be enough for you already. Really comes down to every individual build, I would say. But let's now go on with the Topaz, aka the Orange Archon Shards. And this is the point where probably I will have to add or correct something in the pinned comment in a couple of days, because the wording on this one is really confusing for me. Let me explain. The first option makes that for every enemy that you kill with blast damage, you recover one with the normal and two with the Talforge Archon Shards, health. This is capped at a maximum of 300 or 450 with the Talforge variant. So to me, because they give a cap here, this sounds like it's kind of a budget variant of Arcane Blessing, where for every blast kill, you increase your Warframe's maximum health by one or two. If what I just said was correct and I understood it right, then this would be of course a great choice for health tanking playstyles, potentially opening up an arcane slot that you previously had for arcane blessing. The next option of the orange shard is also a more defensive one, but this one is pretty clear to me and I think it's absolutely wild. What it does is, whenever you inflict a blast status effect on an enemy, you regenerate with the normal 5 and with the Tau Forged 7.5 shield points. This is not your maximum shield, this is just standard shield recovery. At first glance, doesn't sound all that impressive. But remember, it's not when you kill an enemy, it's for every blast status effect inflicted onto an enemy. And especially when we're talking about Steel Path, there are a lot of enemies spawning. If you maybe have a grouping ability and take an explosive weapon with AoE, then inflicting a blast effect on 10 or maybe 20 enemies at once can quite easily happen. So depending on which setup you're running, one or two Topaz shards might be all you even need for a great shield gating approach. I definitely want to check this one out on a couple of frames that use the mod catalyzing shields. And the last option Orange provides is actually pretty straightforward. You get a permanent buff of critical chance for secondary weapons every time you kill an enemy that is affected by heat damage. With the normal variant, this is plus 1% crit chance per kill, and for the Tau Forge, we have plus 1.5%. The whole thing is capped at 50% for the normal and 75% for the Tau Forge variant. So, in case for whatever reason you want your secondary to have a higher critical chance, then here is the way to go. And the final type of Archon Shards that we have would be the Emerald, aka the green one, and this one has, in my opinion, the single craziest option out of all of them. We're gonna get to that, but first, let's look at option one. Toxin status effects deal plus 30% on the normal and plus 45% on the Tau Forged variant more damage. Now, since Toxin is one of the four elements that deal damage over time and that can also double dip with faction damage, this has always been one of my favorite status effects. However, on the other side, pure Toxin is actually only used against Corpus, and to be fair, Corpus are made out of paper mache anyway. But who knows what DE might plan with the Toxin status effect in the future, so let's just keep this one in the back of our minds. The next option is also one where I'm a bit confused about the wording and I might have to correct something after the fact. The way I interpret this would be as a healing ability, giving you two with the normal and three with the Tau Forge variant, health each time an enemy is damaged by a toxin status effect. 
Now, I don't know if they phrased it like this intentionally, but when they say each time enemies are damaged by a toxin status effect, to me, this sounds like the heal doesn't come when you inflict the toxin status effect, but only after one second when the first damage over time tick hits the enemy, therefore the status effect has dealt damage. Might be that I'm over analytical, but if this is true, then the heal setting in from this effect might be with a one second delay, so we definitely want to keep that in the back of our minds. And finally, let's get to the, what I think is the craziest options out of all the new Archon shards. And that would be increasing the maximum stacks of corrosive status effects on enemies by two, or if you have the Tailforge variant, by three. As you know, corrosive status effects are capped at 10 per enemy by default. With this one, we could get up to 12 or even 13. And here's why this is so great. Corrosive status effects reduce enemy armor. The first corrosive proc that you inflict will reduce enemy armor by 26% and every subsequent proc by another 6%. Meaning, with Corrosive alone, you can reduce enemy armor by up to 80%, but not further. With this Archon Shard though, we could get up to 12 or even 13 procs, meaning the potential armor reduction would be at 92 or, with the Tau Forge variant, at 98% of the enemy's maximum armor. Now, when I first read this, I was a bit disappointed because that means even with the Tau Forge variant, we cannot get to the magical 100% armor reduction. But then, when I thought about it for a second, I realized that this is actually the reason why it is so great. Let me elaborate. As you all know, there is an aura mod called Corrosive Projection, reducing enemy armor by 18%. So if you really wanted to full strip on just Corrosive alone, then increasing the maximum of Corrosive effects to 12 and combining it with Corrosive Projection would already yield you more than 100%, therefore you can now do that, and this is great. However, what I think would be even greater than that is, don't use Corrosive Projection and rather use a Tau Forged Green one to get up to 13 Corrosive Effects and keep it at those 98% armor reduction. Why don't we want a full strip? Well, when we're going for armor reduction through Corrosive, it is quite likely we're gonna have a weapon equipped that deals Corrosive damage. And that's great because, as we all know, Corrosive gets a plus 75% damage bonus against Ferrite armor. However, the moment those enemies lose this armor completely, we also lose this 75% damage bonus from Corrosive. And in my personal opinion, even when you're going up against very high Steel Path level enemies, reducing their armor by 98% down to only 2%, but therefore still getting the 75% damage bonus because they still have armor, I find that actually kind of nicer than reducing their armor completely and giving up the fat 75% damage bonus. Now, of course, depending on which Warframe and which weapon you play, this might all look different on your personal setup, but I would say this is something definitely to keep in mind. As you see, these new shards open up tons and tons of possibilities in your builds and setups. And if you now want to get your greedy fingers on some for yourself, then here is how you get them. First of all, you need to finish the new Whispers in the Wall quest. This one is unlocked as soon as you have the new War quest done, so in case you haven't done that yet, this is the time to jump into it. Then, once the quest is done, you get access to a new syndicate where you have to talk with this bird kind of character who sells the new Helmet Coalescent segment. Buy this one and install it on your Helmet chair. Then, sit down in the chair, go to the Archon Shards tab, and you will realize there is this little icon here on the side where you can fuse Archon Shards. Here's how it works. In order to get an Archon Shard of one of the new colors, you have to fuse two of the old Archon Shards that make up that color into the new one. So, for example, if you want an orange Archon Shard, you have to give up one red and one yellow one and fuse them into the orange. This permanently destroys the old Archon Shards and gives you the orange one. Also, these fusions cost a new resource called Stila that you get from playing missions on the brand new tile set. And one final note, you cannot fuse a Tau Forge shard with a non-Tau Forge shard. You can only fuse two Tau Forged into one new Tau Forged or two normal ones into one new normal one. Now, in case you haven't yet, then absolutely also check out my in-detail guide on the brand new Warframe Corvex right here. Another massive thank you to Akimbo Fate, Nils V, Lamies, Demon Lord Zell, Bland Waffle, Demon Emperor, Emperor Prime, Ruskamese, and all other generous channel members for all of your support. We see each other, hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, 
Good loot.